with Avery's help um, refereeing the uh, presentation. We're going to start with, uh, with Brian Churchill from the Crest Crescent Valley Wild Site, and then um, and then it's going to be Bill, and then Garth, and then after that, if, if somebody else has some things that they would like to stand up and say, we'll do it this morning. So, welcome, and here's the remote. Where is the remote? And Push the button and press something. Yes. <laughs> so, Avery's going to pull up your presentation. Okay. Well, just to follow, uh, follow up on, on Jason there, I was born in Saskatchewan, Jason. <laughs> but my parents saw the light when I was not that high and moved to Creston on the train. Remember when the train brought people to Creston? <laughs> and then uh, somewhere in my life, I spent a bunch of time in a place called Fort St. John. And if you want to value water, you should live on a rural acreage in Fort St. John because there is no water. You have it trucked in for your house. And they, they don't have sewer systems. We have to truck the sewer out. So when you've lived for about 30 years with trucking water in, trucking it out, you learn really about water conservation in our modern lifestyle. And you realize how much people don't respect it and, and how much they don't serve it. So I'm the current president of Creston Valley Wild Site and I'm going to zip through uh, a little presentation about what we do and then I'm going to talk about our most recent project and hopefully I can do that in the time allotted. So uh, welcome to Creston for those of you from out of town. Um, I just want to say that uh, uh, Wild Site was initially the East Kootenai Environmental Society, and uh, where do I do this? Which way do I point it? Pointed at that computer over there. And then we almost, and then there's a forward and a backwards. Up and down. Which one is back? Right. Oh, this one here. There we are. All right. <laughs> okay, well, Wild Site uh, is, is a, was formerly the East Kootenai Environmental Society. It's expanded and uh, associated and collaborating with, with Wild Site is the Creston Valley Branch. It was formed in 1990. There's some um, addresses to go look at it on the internet. And, uh, <laughs> Here. So I want to I want to talk about our a few of the programs at Creston Valley Wild Site. Uh, number one program uh, is the Creston Valley Community Forest, which at one point in time uh, um, Yakanuki was was part of, and it, it's about forest management in, in in the area here. Our second program is uh, our our fifth annual. Bird Fest. Some of you all heard of it. It's coming up in May, and we put on a show about the birds of the valley. Uh, we have a number of presentations. Uh, it's centered around the wildlife management area out here on the flats. This year's keynote speaker is James Duncan, an owl specialist. Uh, Local Colors is a program we put on here at the theater. Now, the demographic in Creston is pretty old, and uh, we have a lot of older members, and one of the things we do is get uh, local people and, uh, to present a, a slideshow in the fall of, of, of something they've done locally here. And uh, we used to get attendance of over 200 people. Um, we, we collaborate with, with regional wild site, as we call it, on educational programs. And Melissa Flint uh, does it under contract here in Creston. Um, so these are all the classrooms with outdoors nature, the seasons uh, program she puts on uh, at the schools as, as part of that program. Not sure who I 
not sure you actually uh, fund ZAC. Um, it's regional wildlife funding, but it is funded. Uh, one of the other things we tend to do is put on uh, presentations on an ad hoc basis. So uh, basically, whoever we can think that's a relevant talk with, we organize and put on a presentation and, and invite the public uh, to from this year, um, or maybe well for self last year, I think uh, we just had this 12 year old boy, 11 year old boy come and present about his trip to Ecuador where he's a, he's a bird, birding. But we do that on a regular basis and I go through the files, I look for stuff. Um, we try to do about three or four a year, everything from dark woods to whatever. Um, our job, we see it, uh, a job in the sense that we're all volunteers, is advocating for the environment. Uh, we have a couple hundred members, um, and they expect us to advocate the environmental viewpoint, uh, their environmental viewpoint, uh, in a whole bunch of things. So we, we participate in things like this, we participate in uh, climate change conferences, we, um, all these things on, on an ad hoc basis, um, advocating for uh, trails, parks, wilderness, fresh air. Uh, it's interesting. As we went through some strategic planning, we talked about uh, our real goal is a sustainable community um, based on local food and, and fresh water. Uh, one of the things in our strategic plan is we keep talking about what can we do with water because water is so important and connects us all. Um, and we not actually don't have a specific um, <coughs> program on water at this point in time. Uh, we started in Creston Valley with concerns with the forest industry and forest industry standards. And I'll be really blunt, I was out of window the other day and uh, there's a lot of going on on private land out there that makes us want to start all over again. But in general, our advocacy uh, through the community forest and, and, and with the industry in general has dramatically changed uh, forest practices and, and we had a stalwart in the name of Ralph Moore uh, who was our strong advocate for over 20 years. Uh, our members are often active outdoors. They're mostly hikers and that, so we promote self promote activities such as hiking. And we're active in the creation of some of the trails here, both the trails and the rest of them. Now, what Tara invited me to come talk about, <laughs> I did get to it. I was going to ask. There's there. still on <laughs> is for coming up with a new project. So we've been looking at how to reconnect um, in the valley, um, what things are important, and particularly what things would involve the youth in our community. Uh, how do we involve our youth? How do we get them to commit to the environment as we once got committed? So we came up with this project, and the idea is, Came out of actually some some projects that we've seen back east called green maps, where people start mapping the green issue, literally mapping, so that people can understand how it interconnects. Um, so we we've we've knocked that around, and, and uh, the long term goal, um, the the project is to map. But the long term goal is to prior prioritize areas that need protection and work uh, can't read that uh, to assure protection and strategies of management uh, linking our environment because we have a big footprint uh, in this valley and we can't find any sort of overall view of it uh, what does it look like Where, where's you know, what's pushing here and, and pulling here and that. We all have those kind of algorithms in our head. 
but that means we don't share them effectively. So what can we do to put something in front of people so that we all come get on the same page and understand what things are influencing? So, hard to see, but initially we're, we thought we'd look at the valley, your valley folks, so about the valley. Um, and there's sort of a, can you see that better than I can? No. Um, if you, you can see the labels and uh, the pink area is basically the initial area we want to have a look, look at or, or, or we propose to look at. Um, those boundaries will be, are you through that? I don't think it's going to help. Maybe. That's better. Um, we want to look at the immediate valley and its immediate environments and see how it's, how things connect. And most particularly where the connections, green connections, whether they're parks, whether they're little bits of land, anything that grows anything basically that's green um, and has an influence, of course, on water. Um, so we, we've just drawn arbitrarily drawn a, a line around it. As we go to work uh, with our student, uh, whoops, sorry. It's a shy one. That one, yeah. Uh, as we go to work this summer with a student from Selkirk College, uh, we're going to refine that study area to fit in, in, in geomatics because uh, the way to look at stuff these days is to is to uh, look at it in all the databases that are out there. I am a klutz. The buttons are just really small. Uh, the buttons are just really small. Big figures. It's not your fault. Yeah. <laughs> so talking with the folks at the college, they have access to virtually everybody's database. That anything that's, that's been defined geomatically, they have access to. Uh, so think of forestry data, think of water network data, think of urban uh, information, uh, cadastro, agriculture data, all that stuff. And so we're gonna sit with the student, we're gonna have the student go through all the applicable databases, come up with what factors are important and see if we can, and, and we'll have a team to help with it, see if we can identify an algorithm that identifies the sensitive areas in the Creston Valley. Um, and its environment, so if I went back to that map here, we particularly made sure that we included all of Arrow Creek, and all of Duck Creek, the two major um, um, watersheds, plus all the minor watersheds. I mean, and there's lots of them uh, in, in Canyon and West Creston. One of our members wants to look at Corn Creek in its entirety. I don't, I'm a little skeptical that that one will stay there. <coughs> but we're, we're trying to look at all the little local watersheds. Um, that contribute so much to the to the value here in Preston. Uh, it's a three-stage project. Um, might, might get totally split. The first is the assembly of the database. Um, the second is an analysis to look at this um, um, whatever is sensitive sites there are from recreation or watershed or or Wildlife habitat, we're going to try and put them all in there. And, and then we want to take that as a, as a common base to talk to and, and uh, take it out to others with um, more local launch, have them uh, working from that, refine the, the knowledge base. Uh, and at some point in time, as we get this organized, uh, we would like to talk to uh, your
your people, uh, your knowledge, your culture, and see how it fits in. We'd like to talk to all the crazy biologists that work in the Creston Valley but don't live here, <laughs> and the local people that live here as well, and, and see if we can put this all together and identify what's really sensitive, what they've got, and particularly what things need protecting. Uh, we see a lot of the greenscape in the valley. Uh, just one day you wake up and it's gone. And I think I think the best example of that right at the moment is folks out here in Window, <clears throat> this beautiful mountainside above above Window uh, had private ownership. They sold it to a Jimmy Fiber company. And I think right now they're they're talking 500 acres they've logged this winter in one in one blast, and they're currently talking with the Wiggins family to buy up the other holdings they have. And this company just strips them. It's going to have a big impact on the valley um, and a big impact on the water supply. There. And it's one of those things that happens. So somewhere we got to have the strategic view. I'm sorry. I keep back here. Get smarter. <laughs> uh, the initial funding for this is actually from our own funds, from our Preston Valley Branch funding. Uh, we did receive a, a grant from Yellowstone to Yukon to support this project. Uh, we've got some discussion in with the other funders. And, you know, the scope of the project is good enough for the initial cost. Um, the scope may expand if we get, if we get more funding. That's it. Questions? Just we have a couple minutes. minister questions. Jerry? Oh, you mentioned uh, this private uh, logging that's gone on and fear cut and, and the impact that can have. You know, for years I've been driving back and forth between uh, Cranbrook and uh, Creston. And of course, you drive through Yak. And for years, the backdrop to Yak was just a solid green wall of trees. And then suddenly, in about one summer, two summers, you look up there now, it's just a clear cut. And I don't think that was done privately. Like, uh, or I'm sure I don't, yeah, I don't think that was private. That was through BC timber sales, like what's supposed to be the higher standard public logging. And look at it yourself the next time you go through the act, that whole bridge there. Is, oh my. I, I, I think four standards and not if we log, but how we log and what use we make of that, which was the initial start for wild site for the Preston Valley. Uh, it's kind of coming around full circle. It's been, we're going to be concerned about it. And, um, I know John Bergenski from the regional wild site is very active with, with uh, Canfor and, and uh, the other companies up there, local companies who are not engaged with right now. Um, we need to talk about it, and, and I'm, I'm on the board of directors for a while, say, of Preston Valley Community Forest, and right now, uh, the money in forestry has never been as good. Yeah. And under that puts huge pressures. Where does Windmill get its water? Is Windmill on the surface? Level? Duck Creek. Duck Creek. Which, interestingly, uh, Duck Creek, a big chunk of its watershed, owned by the Wiggins family and it's currently under discussion for sale to the highest bidder that uh, it's kind of an interesting the Wiggins have been around running window box and lumber for a long time uh, that they've changed they separated out the, the sawmill and, and, and the, the crown uh, timber rights and sold it to hand for and now the private lands they held, but I guess sometimes they did some logging on and all of a sudden these big blocks of private land are now on the market for people that have less, less local interest. Actually, I'm, I'm sorry. Can you guys like yeah. that? Yeah. Okay. And also um, the East Shore Freshwater Habitat Society has done some some mapping stuff you might want to put in there too. So I just wanted to, <coughs> in my job, in my, 
Have a good day. So, thanks, Amy.